program design section. So how the program design is going to work is we are going to talk about the basics today. At the end of this, I'm going to help you write out a four week thing. All right. The whole purpose behind this is to give you guys the tools and teach you how to write a program out. Now, I will say this. If you take exactly what I write and try to turn it in as your project, I'm going to give you an F. Um, I'm trying to help you guys out and give you examples. My, exam my, my experiences are not going to be the same as yours, plus my goals are not the same as yours. So I need you guys to take what I'm giving you and adjust it to your own thing. This stuff isn't that hard, shouldn't take you that long to do. I'm just trying to give you as many tools as possible, okay? So here we go. Hopefully you guys got something out and you're ready to go. Also, I need interaction via your microphone. Typing is okay, but I need it'd be easier for me so I can stay here so you, I can write up on here and get this moving along instead of having to walk back and forth so you guys don't have to get a close up of my mug, okay? It's not the best looking mug in the world. I have a face for radio. I own that. It's cool, but let's try to get a little, be a little more vocal. And the more vocal you guys are, the faster this goes through. The other two classes have gotten out a little early. I have no problem letting you guys out early, but I need you participating in this as we're going through. Sound like a deal? Yes, sir. Yes, there we go. All right. Yep. So we talked about program design last week, um, and we talked about why you need a program. What were some of the examples that we gave in terms of why somebody would need a program? To constantly keep their, to like keep their progress and to eventually meet their goals without fully like yeah. destroying their entire body. Exactly, exactly. To focus on that incremental progress over time that will eventually lead you to your goals. What else? Somebody besides Hector. What were some of the other reasons we had people hopping on programs or seeking out people to write programs for them? To have a plan before going to the gym instead of just trying to wing it and like having. Right. What was that, that call? Do you remember the word I used? Started with an A. Accountability. Accountability. To give yourself accountability. We want to make sure that you have something structured, that you go into the gym with a plan so you're not, as you guys just used, winging it and just trying all sorts of things, that you have a set plan of attack for that day that is going to get you closer to your goals. What are some other reasons that we want you hopping on programs? To make progress over time in small increments so you're not putting too much strain on your body and you can keep that progress right right now we talked about that uh, Hector had mentioned that ori originally what was the thing that we talked about or that stalling out that we uh, we had talked about that we kind of needed a program sometimes to bust through we need to change up the style of program whether it be the intensity the level of difficulty of the program or just the whole approach altogether what was that that we were trying to break through who remembers to get over a plateau Get over a plateau, absolutely, absolutely. So those are the main reasons that we're trying to uh, uh, um, um, create the programs or get on the programs. And then there was one last thing that we talked about. It was a three word phrase. First and last word started with S. And what this did was it allowed us to make sure that we had benchmarks set up throughout the entire training plan and make sure that we were working towards our goals. And those benchmarks were checkpoints, essentially, to make sure that we were on pace. But what was that last big piece that we talked about? Who remembers? The acronym SMART. Huh? The acronym SMART. No, that's how we did the goals. This was before that in the notes. Three, it was three words. First and the uh, third word started with an S. Middle word was and. Might have to pull out your notes for this one, but come on now. You guys should know this. It was to make sure that the exercises that we were picking were appropriate in terms of working towards the goal. If you're shy, you can type it out. Come on now. What unit was it in? What? Which unit was it in? What unit? Uh, the last unit we just did, unit five. Okay. It was right before we started talking about SMART goals.
Three word phrase, middle word is and. First and third word, started with an S. Scope and sequence. Scope and sequence, there you go. Yeah, scope and sequence. You wanna make sure, I'm gonna use that back squat comparison that we were talking about. Wanna make sure that if we're trying to build your back squat, we're not using bench press and upright rows to build your back squat. Those are good exercises to build your upper body strength, but they're not necessarily gonna get you a bigger back squat. So we wanna make sure that the scope and sequence of our plan along with the benchmarks that we set along the way are getting you closer to that goal of a bigger back squat, right? So to the whiteboard, focusing on programming in and of itself. So everything that we're gonna talk about is going to be in relation to how I do things at Jones and how we operate at Jones. So this is struck, strictly just the Jones method, so to speak. So keep that in mind as we're going through here. This is going to change Program to program, sport to sport, building to building. But for me and how I operate with you guys, this is what we do here. So there are three main parts. God, I keep dropping this flipping pen cap. Um, there are three main pieces of writing a program. At the top or the broadest part of it, you have a macro cycle. Make sure you guys are writing this stuff down. For the sake of Jones, a macro cycle is the entire school year of training. All right? So for when you guys report in the fall to when we leave in May, June, it's a macro cycle for us. Macro cycle is the entire encompassing calendar year of training. Now, for like a sport like baseball, it could be just the baseball season. That's your macro cycle. Um, or you, for any other sport that operates on a year-round basis, you can have your off-season, in-season, pre-season, stuff like that. Those are all different macro cycles. But the macro cycle itself should be the biggest portion of that training. Okay, So for us, the entire school year at Jones is our macro cycle. All right? Now... Within the macro cycle, you have smaller portions. For us, we have what are considered meso cycles. Okay, the next big piece is a meso cycle. All right? Meso cycle for Jones. If you guys remember who had my class last year, every time we tested, we were testing your maxes, just kind of see where you are. That was a meso cycle. From one test to the other was a mesocycle. So for Jones, our mesocycles are test to test. All right? In relation to time constraints, it could be anywhere from an 8, 12, or 16-week training block. All right? Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about mesocycle? No questions. So mesocycle essentially is for us our test to test. The macro cycle is the entire school year. And then depending on how the school year is broken down, we can have a bunch of different mesocycles in between there. I think last year we got to like four before we ended up getting sent home for quarantine and stuff like that. So hopefully we get some more in, or maybe we at least get four in, but we'll see how things go in terms of when we're going back. Nobody knows when we're going back, so I don't know, don't ask, please. But mesocycle for us is test is test. Now, within a mesocycle, you have microcycles. How else if I can spell, huh? Micro. So if a macro cycle is the entire school year, meso cycle is test to test within that school year. What do you guys think a micro cycle is? Uh, like week to week, maybe? Yep, week to week. That's exactly correct. Week to week. Now keep in mind, for me, in terms of how I program for you guys at Jones, that is three days worth of work. I program three days at a time, and depending on whether it's an A day or a B day or wherever we fall in the week, you guys usually see me two or three times a week, right? So we wanna make sure that you're getting through your three days, that is one week. So for me, 
If you have a microcycle, which is week to week, which fits inside a mesocycle, which is test to test, which fits inside the macro cycle, which is the entire school year of training. All right? Now, all of this leads to one big piece. Who remembers the story of Milo, of Croton? The man with the cow. The man with the cow. All right. What was the moral of that story? Who remembers? Wasn't it the moral of the story was he was doing incremental strength training? He was doing cow, incremental strength training, but with him. He was, yeah, he was using the bull. As the bull strength or this bull size increased, so did the, uh, Milo's strength. What was the term, though, that we used? Progressive overload. Progressive overload, okay? This entire thing, that is the, at the end of the day, that's all strength training is. We are working on progressive overload, okay? So at the end of the day, all we are trying to do is build up our capacity. For strength or progressive overload. Now, what is the purpose of progressive overload? What are we trying to get the body to do? There's a specific word that I'm you that I'm looking for. Starts with an A, ends with a T I O N. It's a process that occurs anytime a new stimulus or new skill is introduced to us, whether it's in our brain through our body, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Adaptation. Adaptation, right? At the end of the day, we're trying to get progressive overload, which causes adaptation. Okay? Adaptation, right here. This is going to allow for us to be able to get stronger over time using that incremental progress, incorporating the scope and sequence to make sure that we are using benchmarks to check and if we are building a little bit of strength each time, getting us towards our goal, which is going to be measured week to week, which is also considered a micro cycle. Then within that week, we're going test to test, which could be eight, 12 or 16 weeks at a time, which is a meso cycle, which is gonna be within our macro cycle, which is the entire school year of training. Does anybody have any questions about this, all right, this intro in terms of what we're doing? No. Okay, I'm gonna erase it. So hopefully you guys are paying attention, taking notes. All right, so now we have, we've gotten the basics of what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to create adaptation using that progressive overload within a, within a macro and then a meso and a micro cycle, right? Now we're gonna talk about the actual nuts and bolts of how we're gonna get the body to create that adaptation. And what we're gonna talk about is the simplest form of strength training there is. We're, there's only two main forms that we're gonna talk about. One of them we're going to talk about today, the other one we're going to talk about next week. And the first one is a phrase that has been used in your documentaries, in the units and stuff like that. You might not remember, but I want to see if you do. Um, it starts with a P, ends with a T-I-O-N. Does anybody remember the phrase of training that has been talked about throughout all this time that we've been working together so far? Progression. Uh, that's an S-I-O-N. But oh, yeah. It's all right. You haven't had your coffee yet. Incremental progress. Uh, we've already talked about that, but that's that's within this. This is a type of training methodology. Any other guesses? Starts with a P, ends with a T I O N. Preparation. No, close, but no. Give you one more guess, and I'll let you know what it is. All right, what I'm looking for is periodization. 
Like I said, I, I know it's been mentioned before. We, I don't think we've specifically gone over it, so it's okay that you guys didn't know that. But what we are looking for is periodization. Periodization has been called a couple different things. Linear periodization, Western periodization. Um, essentially speaking, this is really big in the United States. Um, but this is probably the most basic form of training that you can use to track and, and see physical progress, especially what I do at Jones. And when I'm working with my younger athletes, I operate with more periodization. The other one that I'm going to talk about, I use with my more advanced athletes, but we got to be able to master the basics, which is periodization. Periodization works. It can be made as complicated or as simple as you want. And it is proven time and time again to work. Okay. So periodization can be summed up very quickly with one graph here, okay? So in that graph, you got your axis points. Down here is time, right? Up here, we have reps. And then we have intensity. Over time, the intensity will increase and the reps will decrease. Does everybody see how that works? That in and of itself is the, what periodization is. That is periodization in a nutshell. As time goes on, so as we're getting to 4 and 12 and 16 weeks, the intensity is going up. The reps are going down. We can use this even, we can break this down even further into just a simple four week block because that's the example i'm about to give you guys over there okay reps are starting to go down time is starting to go up it depends on how long you extrapolate this out based on how long it's going to go for our sake today in the example that i give you guys this is just going to be for a four week block all right this is periodization in and of itself in a nutshell it's about as simple as i can make it does anybody have any questions about that All right, how we program at Jones, or how I program at Jones. Main lifts, those of you who had me last year, what were the main exercises that we used in terms of writing programs? There were five main movements that we used. Who can name them for me? Uh, strict press, deadlift, bench press. Uh, I don't know the other, I don't know the other two. Overhead press. What kind of deadlift did we do, Lauren? Sumo deadlift. Uh -oh. Whoever's in the background, tell them to pipe down. Bench press. What were the other two? There were squatting movements. Uh, sir, I can't see it's part of the board. The, the light's blinding the board a bit. All right. Well, I, mean, I can't move the board, brother. Uh, I apologize for that. It's overhead press. Sumo deadlift and bench press. So uh, strict press was another one. That that's overhead press. Never mind, never mind. What are the two squatting movements? Back squat and front squat. Yep, back squat. And front squat. All right. Those are our five main movements. I know there's a glare. I, I can, I'm going to take a picture of these so I can post them in the group with you guys along with the live recording so you can see everything. So I, I apologize. I know there's a glare, but I can't move the board and I can't move a light. They're fixated on the ceiling. So our five main movements, overhead press, sumo deadlift, bench press, back squat, front squat. Those are the five main lifts that we did. I would have loved to have done snatches and clean with you guys. Problem is, is I don't know what the teacher is that's underneath us, but they weren't very happy when we did deadlifts. So I don't think they'd be really happy if we were adding in snatches and cleans and dropping bars from overhead. So oh, I know, I know I was actually part of that group last year. It was the math group. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not, I'm not the genius that put a weight room on the sixth floor of a building. So, um, or a pool on the seventh floor. What? Or a pool on the seventh floor. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I, I, I don't go up to the seventh floor. So now our weekly progressions.
how we rotate through these. Some of you had my class last year. This is going to seem familiar. Others, this might be the first time, but it's probably going to make sense as we are working through it. Okay, sets and reps and then percentages. All right, so week one, who remembers what our week one percent or week one sets and rep scheme always was? Really simple. Say, five, remember? Right? Say that again. Five reps. Yep. And Both then, set. oh, I can't remember the sets. Same as the reps. Oh, right, five by five. Yes, ma'am. Five by five. So when you are writing a training program, this is how I want it written out. This is always sets. This is always reps. With the reps, the reps are, if I were doing bench press, I take the bar off the rack and I do five bench presses. Then I put the bar back in the rack. That is one set. You have five of those, all right? Percentage wise, you should be, once you know what your max is, if you remember last year, we didn't set maxes the first few weeks because we're just trying to get you guys some basic strength going, okay? But once you have a max, your five by five should be operating between 65 and 75% 75 of your max. You're gonna notice a trend here as we're going on. Week two, our sets and our reps. Anybody wanna take a guess at what those are? Equals 18, it's a math problem. Big number first, second number is smaller. Six by three. Six by three, add a boy. Okay, so we go from five by five, more volume, higher reps, lower intensity. Lowering the reps a little bit, we're increasing the intensity. So from here, you should be operating in a 75 to 85%. All right? Does anybody want to guess week two percentages or uh, uh, sets and reps? Eight by two? Uh, close. Nine by two. Oh, eight by two is very close, but it's going to be seven by two. Seven by two is our week three percentages or our week three sets and reps. Then the percentages go up to 85 to 95% of the max. So you see here, we're not quite at 100%, but we should be operating pretty darn close, all right? And then week four is a back off. I like to back off every four weeks. Um, there's a specific name for those weeks. Starts with the D, ends with the load. Anybody wanna take a guess at what that week is called? The overload. Close. Take out the over. Deload. Deload. All right. This is a deload week. What we're doing, the whole purpose behind a deload week is we are allowing the body to adjust and to recover from the three weeks of abuse we put it through here. So volume is going to be low. Intensity is going to be low. So I'll do something along the lines of three sets of three to five reps. And we'll probably operate 60 to 70%. So if you're operating, you're doing three reps, you're gonna be higher in that range. If you're doing five reps, you're gonna be lower in that range. And the whole goal is to allow the body to recover so that we can start another four weeks and do it all over again, all right? Does anybody have any questions about this? No. All right. All right, I'm going to erase it because we're going to go on to the last section of the day. All right, 
So now this next section, we're gonna go over how to write a sample four week program using that method, the periodization method that I just went over with you guys. We're only gonna do four weeks. We're gonna break it down for our three days. Because remember, I only write three days a week for you guys. It's all you really need with everything else you got going on. Those of you who were in my class last year, you know you saw a ton of progress with those three days a week. So we're gonna stick to that template, make it nice and easy for you guys so you have a sample to use and look at, all right? So we have week one. Week two. Week three. And week four. And we got day one. Day two. And day three. All right? So you guys remember the main movements that we just talked about. Hopefully you got them all written down. For the sake of this, I want to do two upper body days, one or two lower body days, one upper body day. Uh, mostly because everybody wants to train upper body. Nobody wants to train legs. Legs are more stronger. Now it's going to allow you to be better at whatever it is that you're doing. You need your legs long, way longer throughout your life than you're going to need your arms. So we want to make sure those are nice and strong. Okay. So I mean, you don't even fully need your arms because I mean some people can do a lot of things with just your legs. Right, well, but we're gonna train your arms just a little bit because you need those just a hair. All right, so, first day, lower body day. Obviously, I'm gonna write warm up here because you always gotta start with a good warm up. What is our main exercise that we wanna do here? Pick either one of the squatting movements or the deadlift. Which one do you guys wanna put here? Deadlift. All right, sumo deadlift, that's our first day. So our sumo deadlift, we're going five by five, week one. Now we're going to add some accessories in here. We haven't talked about accessory work yet, but accessory work is essentially extra things that we're going to be doing that is going to allow us to build up and shore up any weaknesses that we're not hitting with the deadlift. So the deadlift is primarily a posterior chain. So that means we are working your lower back, your butt, your hamstrings, okay? What are some accessory movements that we would want to incorporate to work opposite groups, excuse me, in the lower body section to make sure that we have a well-rounded program? Squats? Not necessarily. That's a main movement. You got to keep in mind, when I'm programming for you guys, I have 90-minute classes. Once you take into consideration your 10 minutes to change to get into class and your 10 minutes to change to go to your next class, I only get 70 minutes to work with you guys. So we gotta make sure that we're getting our best bang for our buck. So I only like to do one main movement. Today, that's sumo deadlift. Squats is gonna be the other upper or lower body day. What accessory movements do we wanna do? Uh, lunges. Love it, lunges, 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 lunges. So I'd like to pick two to three accessory movements. So we got one down, lunges. I'm gonna add core in there. Because I always like doing core on lower body day. I just think it just makes more sense. So we're going to also add in core. What else? What's another accessory movement that we could add in here? Bulgarians. Bulgarian what? Just gonna You're going to take a Bulgarian person and throw them in there? They're working? No, I mean, like, it's where you have, like, your knee on a bench. Bulgarian split squat. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to write BSS. BSS, Bulgarian split squats. I like it. All right, day one is done. Upper body day. Obviously, we're going to warm up. What movement do you guys want to choose? Bench press, overhead press. Which one? Bench press. All right, bench press. Here we go. Here we go. So we got bench press. And we are operating still on that five by five. Now accessory work. 
What do we want to do for accessory work? So bench press, we are primarily working in the chest, a little bit of the shoulders, and primarily the tricep, which is the back of the arm. What are some other upper body exercises that we want to include in our accessory work to make sure that we are balancing out the upper body in our training and that one part of the muscle group or one part of the body isn't getting overtrained too much? Curls. Say that again? Curls. I need you to speak up. Curls. An arm. Bicep. Triceps. Okay, what though? Biceps. I, I, I heard that part, but I need to understand like what we I need a movement. Curling. Like, oh, you're, you're talking about curls. That's biceps. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. So how about hammer curls? Let's write some hammer curls in there. Does that sound good? Sounds good. All right, thank you. Hammer curls. What else? What about something for the That's back? Good. We got a lot of pushing going on. We're not doing a lot of pulling. Give me a back exercise. Row. A row. Love it. Rows. Rows are one of my favorite back exercises to do. All right. What else? So we're touching hammer curls. We're touching rows. What else do we want to do upper body wise? Skull crushers. All right, skull crushers. I like it. I like it. All right, that's a pretty good upper body day, if you ask me. Now, keep in mind, with our accessory work, the weight is going to be lower. The reps are going to be higher. So these should be about anywhere from eight all the way up. I've done all the way up to like 30 rep sets with you guys, okay? So we want the – and the higher the reps, the lower the weight, just like that whole periodization table we were talking about. The intensity, when you start increasing the reps, the intensity is lower, right? Want to make sure that we're staying balanced here. These are two great days of working out going on right here, okay? So day three, warm up, okay? Front squat, back squat. Which one do you guys want to do? Back squat. Back squat. Love it, love it, love it. So we got back squat. We're going five by five with the back squat. Now, accessories. What kind of accessories do we want to add in here? So keep in mind now with the back squat, we're more working more anterior chain, which is those quads and the hips are being worked primarily. Still working a little bit of glute and hamstring, all that stuff, but primary movers for the back squat is that anterior chain or those quads and the hips. So what kind of accessory work do we want to be doing? Maybe glute bridges? Glute bridges. Love it, love it, love it. What else? What else? RDLs. RDLs. I like it. I like it. And then I'm going to finish that off with just some core. Like I said, I like core. Want to make sure we're doing enough core with our work so that we can stand tall every day. We're able to support the weights that we're trying to lift, okay? So this is week one. Now, when we move on to week two, not a whole lot is changing. The big thing that's going to be changing is what? The reps. The sets and the reps, absolutely. So I'm going to use tick marks to just mark that things are the same. So our warm-up is the same. Sumos are now going to six by three. Accessories. They can stay the same or you can use the same body parts, but just use a different movement or a different variation that just targets that body part a little bit differently, okay? Same thing for week two. And then day three, same thing. All 
All right. Anybody have any questions about that? No? All right. Then week three. Guys are kind of noticing the pattern here. What are we changing about week three? We're doing seven sets and two reps. Yes, sir. Seven sets, two reps. Again, accessories. We're picking three accessories that are working around types of things like lunges and split squats and core work. Same thing for upper body on week three, day two. And then day three. All right, questions so far about any of this? Um, All right, week four, which is what is week four considered for us? What's the word I'm looking for? Deload. Deload week, thank you. All right, so our warm ups. Gonna be pretty much the same, but everything intensity wise and, and rep wise is low. So we're gonna go three by three to five reps. But big thing that's changing, I only want one accessory movement. You guys remember those days where we'd have C days last year, where it was like the workout can get done in like 30 minutes. That's what these kind of workouts are like. They're shorter workouts. They're not meant to beat you up. They're just allowing you to get some movement in and we're allowing the body to recover so that we can get ready for the next four week block. Now, how I structure this for you guys is I would rotate in other movements. So we would do another four week block where we're working sumo still because I only have one deadlift variation. I don't like conventional, I like sumo, it's a safer motion works more hips, works positions that you're not comfortable with, and it makes sure that you're still using your legs, not your back. But maybe we switch out the next four weeks, we switch out overhead press here. And then over here, we switch out front squat, all right? So we're just rotating back and forth between those movements, but we're still operating in four-week blocks, writing out each week like we're talking about. Does anybody have any questions about this at all? Um, what does it say after rows? on day two skull crushers thank you yep does anybody have any other questions all right that's all we're going to do for today i'm going to stop there I appreciate you guys and your participation. On Friday, what's going to happen? You're going to check in for class. I'm going to have workouts written out for you guys. I'm going to have a bunch of different things for you to do. You're going to have three workouts. You can do them whenever you want. So moving forward, then starting next week, we're going to go over the second half of this. We're going to talk about the other training method. We're going to talk about how to do stuff at home and how to structure things at home using these same philosophies and these same methods. All right. And then the other, the, and then the second half of next week, you're going to be checking in. We're going to give you your workouts and you're going to go from there. I will hang out and answer any questions about the workouts, but you need to be there for attendance. All right. All you gotta do is check in for attendance. Once attendance is taken, the workouts will get posted. I'm going to try to put as much information together for you guys as possible so you have everything you need to do these workouts. And then if you have questions, you just ask me and we'll go from there, all right? If you guys don't have any other questions or anything like that, you guys are free to go for the rest of the day. Thank you very much for your time. I'm turning off this recording right now and it will be posted in the Google Classroom for you guys